Hello there, the Prince and the Pauper. Hi. Hello, Anna. Hi. I think that you weren't here last time we were reading this book. No, uh, this is my first time in reading. In, so, in, in, in your class, this is first time. So, do you know this book? No, I, I don't uh, read uh, a lot. Well, I'll tell you the story so far. There is the, a boy who is a prince and another boy who is a very poor boy. And they look identical. It's difficult to tell them apart. And now they have met and you can see the picture. Can you see the picture there? Yeah, yeah, I see. It. So one of them is a prince and the other is a pauper or a poor boy. Yeah. And they are going to hatch a plan. So now they have met, it's the beginning of the book and they have met. So I'd like to ask you to read a little bit for me and uh, see if we can understand some more of what happens. So can you see that they're speaking to together and they're asking questions about each other and now could you just read a little for me here the the lady yes the lady elizabeth uh, the, the lady elizabeth my sister is uh, 14 and the lady johnny gray Jane Grey, the Lady Jane Grey. The, uh, uh, the Lady Jane Grey, my cousin, uh, is of my mini... My, my own age, yes. My, we say today, my own age. It, she's the same age as me. She is of mine own age. This is an old book, and today we would say is the same age as me. Okay. Comely uh, and gracious with all. But my sister, the Lady Mary, with the hair gloomy, gloomy, uh, uh, mane, uh, and look you, uh, to the sister, forbid their uh, servant to smile. To smile. You know, smiling. Smile. What What is smiling? Do you know? Like laugh, but uh, not too, too much. Yeah, maybe you so, don't open your mouth show, at all when you smile, do you? Showing your teeth a little bit. Maybe, yeah, sometimes yeah. showing your teeth, maybe not. Sometimes lips together, sometimes. Yes. So, um, there are two sisters. Gloomy means unhappy. So, actually, we are a little bit further because it, this is the place where they are speaking, the prince and the pauper, for the first time. So I want to move on now. And um, the pauper, the poor boy, knows Latin. Do you know what Latin is? L language or something? Yeah, Latin is a language from Europe, and uh, this language is part of most of the languages in Europe, Latin. Um, so he has a good education and they plan to actually exchange places. Now, they will do that soon. So, um, I'm moving on. Here they are, they're meeting. Okay, so they change clothes. Now this is about them changing clothes. 
and changing places. So can you read a few minutes later? Uh, a, a few minutes la uh, later, the little prince of walls uh, was girded. Garland, garlanded. Uh, the, the prince of Wales. Wales is uh, a country in Britain and the little prince of Wales was garlanded um, with Tom's fluttering odds and ends. Do you know this expression odds and ends? Have you heard of this before, odds and ends? No. Who knows odds and ends? What are odds and ends? Whoops, I've gone. Just a moment, lost my place there, but making it bigger. Odds and ends. Who can tell me what odds and ends are? Uh, when you have to know things, um, the rest of the things that you don't need could be. Well, another way of saying odds and ends are bits and pieces. So, odds and ends bits and pieces, these two phrases are similar. Who can explain what they mean if somebody says odds and ends, bits and pieces? It's like some part, some part of, of something. Yeah, it is. It's some part of some things, bits and pieces, odds and ends, bits and bobs, that's another one, bits and bobs. There are different expressions, odds and ends, bits and pieces, just things, Not nothing special but just some things. So the Prince of Wales was garlanded with Tom's fluttering odds and ends. So the Prince of Wales, the Prince, started to take up those things which were the paupers because they are changing places and the little prince of pauperdom was tricked out in tricked out in the gaudy plumage of royalty so they changed clothes the two went and stood side by side before a great mirror and lo, lo and behold, we sometimes say, look at this, lo and behold, and lo, a miracle. There did not seem to have been any change made. They stared at each other, then at the glass, then at each other. At last, the puzzled prince said, what dost thou make of this? So in this paragraph, what do you think about them changing clothes? Did it work? Was it um, impressive? Did it? Was it a success? Manuel, what do you think? I don't understand this paragraph. Uh, this paragraph, you? Would but, you like uh, to read it through? Because, because, because there are a lot of uh, work that uh, I don't know what the, what means. For example, cricket, cricket out in the gaudy plumage of royalty. Well, that's a, a very poetic way of saying that he put his clothes on. So, gaudy is um, maybe very showy, too much show. Gaudy is with too much show, lots of extras and things which are uh, maybe a little bit negative, but showing off a bit. And plumage is like a bird has. Do you know this word plumage? Yes, yes. Plumage is the feathers of a bird. Like a, bear, yes. So here we're speaking about the dress of the king. Because a king's dress can sometimes be like the feathers of a bird. Very, very rich with design yes. and pattern. Now, what do you think about their idea of changing places? Did, did they look as though they had uh, changed places properly? Or d did it not look very good. <coughs> uh, you see, you, you want to say that uh, if uh, for the re for the people for the for the people from England, uh, uh, it looks a uh, good idea that the, the king 
dress in this way. And it says, there did not seem to have been any change made. What does that mean? <clears throat> there does not seem to have been any change made. They stared at each other, then at the glass, then at each other. They like it to twin. Yeah. Yeah, they looked really exactly the, as they looked before. So they had swapped their bodies, uh, changed costumes, and nothing was changed because they look exactly the same. So now, what will everybody think? Nothing at all because it, it looks very similar and it, 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 it's not happening anything. <clears throat> yeah, so they will, everybody will think that the pauper is the prince and the prince is the pauper. Okay, except the Latin accent. The Latin. Well, luckily, the yeah. pauper has one trick up his sleeve. Trick up his sleeve. He has a little education which helps him to uh, pull off this change, to pull off this um, deception. What does pull off mean? Not to do something on its time, to change its time, to pro procrastinate it. What? Yeah, this phrasal verb, if he pulled it off, um, he will be able to pull it off. What does it mean? To succeed? Yeah, to, to succeed in something a little bit tricky, uh, not so simple. Uh, so he could pull it off. He could succeed in this deception, and I think he does for some time. So let's move this page down a bit. And um, what dost thou make of this? Ah, good, your worship. Require me not to answer. It is not meet that one of my degree should utter the thing. Um, so now the next paragraph, beginning with then will I utter it. So, let me ask, Igor, are you here today? Yes, I'm Could here. you read them this next paragraph, please? Then we'll utter it. Who has the, the same hair? That, that word for, that old-fashioned word for you is pronounced thou. Thou yes. hast the same hair, so it's thou. Remember, mm -hmm. there are some old words for, for you. Uh, you... Uh, can in old English can be thou, um, also ye equals you. So there are some different words for for you. So thou is one of those words for you. Thou hast yeah. means you. Thou hast is an old word for you have. Okay. Thou hast the same hair, the same eyes, the same voice and manner the same form and statue, the same face and countenance, how to read this word? Countenance, countenance, yeah, what's countenance, what is that do you think? Let's have a look at that word, countenance, what, it, what are they speaking about, countenance? It's um, appearance, or it's or expression of someone's face, the way they look, really, countenance. But it's a quite quite a formal word, countenance. You won't see that every day, but it means he looks the same. He had the same ex oh, no in the it same appeared. look, same appearance that I bear. Uh, so if you bear something, it means that you have it. Mm -hmm. This is um, to bear something um, can be to have something that I carry with me, the same countenance as that I bear. So remember this is a book and so quite often in books we're using language which we don't speak but we read. So... Because um, it's literature. Pardon? Uh, because it's literature. Yes, it's literature. It is. It's old literature too. It's, yes. interest it's interesting because it was written by an American author but it's um, in Old English style based on London, 
The same author wrote some other stories based in the Miss Mississippi area. And do you know who wrote the book, everybody? No. Mark Twain. Mark Twain. Eagle knows. Mark Twain. And Mark Twain wrote another book. Eagle, can you tell us which other book? Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer was the boy with Huckleberry Finn from the Mississippi area. And there are some books about his life as well. And uh, they use some of the old language from the Mississippi area. So this is based in, in London. And um, <coughs> some of the language is old, but not all of it. So some of it we can see is and understand. So can we read on, Igor? Yes, uh, the same face and countenance that I bear. Fard uh, we wharf we forth. Fared we forth naked. What can you convert that into modern English? Can you repeat, please? Can you make? Can you change that sentence into uh, "fared we forth"? Fared we forth. Can you convert that into modern English? Forth. What does forth mean? F O R T H. The the number four. No. No. no, because that will have a U, wouldn't it? Like, this w This is forth, like this, forth. So, go forth and multiply is in the Bible. Go forth. Go ahead. It's another way of saying forward. Just mm -hmm. progress. Fared ah, we forth. We went, we went on our way. We went forward. We, we carried on. We went on. There was none could say which was you and which the Prince of Wales. So, um, I'd, what I'd like to do now is finish this reading this paragraph and then ask Igor to summarize it in modern English. So, um, there is none could say which was you and which the Prince of Wales. And now that I am clothed as thou wert clothed, clothed it seemeth. I should be able to more nearly to feel as thou didst when the brute soldier, hark ye, is not this a bruise upon your hand. So hark ye is, hark is listen, hark, listen. So could you just, Igor, tell us what you think is happening in this paragraph? It's happening something... Uh... Very interesting. I can't say. I don't know what's happening here. Let maybe someone uh, from class help us. So, and now that I am clothed as thou wert clothed, how could you say that sentence in modern English? Anybody? And now that I am clothed as thou wert clothed. Let's have some somebody give me that in natural modern English. Clo uh... Clothed is a modern English word, so that's okay. I am is all modern English. Just a few words are d different. So thou, wert, were, clothed. So who can give me a very good sentence in modern English there? Clothes. Uh, word is, is where, where? Word is, is were, yeah. Uh, the, the, so, thou is you, you were clothed. Now I'm clothed, now uh, I'm, I'm wearing the same, the same clothes as you. Well, that's a bit wrong because if you're, they're not actually wearing the same clothes, are they? So, if, now, you, say, uh, if you say, now that I'm wearing the same clothes as you, then we're both wearing the same clothes, but they're not. They've changed clothes. But they're still wearing different clothes. So say that again. Uh, we now uh, we are uh, we are dressing similar now. Now that I'm wearing is good. Now that I'm wearing dressing now uh, or dressed as. Just, okay. I'm looking for the shortest sentence, which is modern. So I'll do this one, and we'll try another later. So I would say there are many possibilities, but 
One way is to say, now that I'm dressed as you were, that's, let me see how many words that is. Now that I'm dressed as you were, don't, I don't need to repeat, I don't need to repeat dressed. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. Now that I'm dressed as you were, I should be able um, to feel as, as you did when the brute soldier, uh, because a, a, a brute soldier hit him or was cruel to him, and now he says he should be able to feel the same experience. Okay, so now um, let's move down a bit. Yes, but it is a slight thing, and your worship knoweth that the poor man at arms. Now, peace! It was a shameful thing and a cruel, uh, cried the priest, the little prince, stamp, stamping his bare foot. If the king stir not a step till I come again, it is a command. In a moment, he had snatched up and put away an article of national importance that lay upon a table and was out at the door and flying through the palace grounds in his bannered rags with a hot face and glowing eyes. As soon as he reached the great gate, he seized the bars and tried to shake them, shouting, Open! Unbar the gates! The, the soldier that had maltreated Tom obeyed promptly, and as the prince burst through the portal, half smothered with royal wrath, the soldier fetched him a sounding box on the ear that sent him whirling to the roadway and said, Take that, thou beggar's spawn, for what thou gotst me from his highness. The crowd roared with laughter. The prince picked himself out of the mud and made fiercely at the sentry, shouting, I am the prince of Wales. My person is sacred, and thou shalt hang for hang for laying thy hand upon me. The soldier brought his halberd to, to a present to a present arms and said mockingly, I salute your gracious highness, then angrily, be off thou crazy rubbish. So who can sum up what's on the screen now at the moment? Uh, this counter encounter between the soldier and the real prince dressed as a pauper. So the real prince is dressed as the pauper. pauper. After Vega, after, uh, yes. So can you tell me what's happening here? Um, Let's have a look at that word maltreated. Do you know the word maltreated? If a word yes, begins uh, with mal, it's bad. Yes. Maltreated, uh, for example, when the, uh, one person hit to another, or uh, put, uh, this, put uh, this person into a jail, or, or something, something no, no good for another person. Yes, if you do yes. something yes. cruel or unkind. Mm -hmm. yes. So, well, the, the soldiers uh, 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 treat the, um, the, the, the real prince bad, because he's wearing that clothes. So the soldier is confused. Well, he, the the yes. soldier the soldier thinks that he is again speaking to Tom. But the the prince thinks that he is going to chastise the soldier or tell him off or uh, tell off somebody. What is telling off? If you tell off somebody, snitch or something. Snitch is a bit like um, telling tales on somebody. Brunch. So uh, snitching is a bit different because that's telling tales. It's like teacher, teacher, Johnny did it. That's <laughs> something like that. But telling off is something the teacher does, or the or the king does, um, or the policeman does. If you are told off, what do you does a policeman do or a teacher do? If you tell off, you you are saying, you are telling somebody's mistakes or faults in an angry way. 
Yeah, so can you give me another verb which is what we would sometimes call a formal verb, but just a, a full verb rather than a phrasal verb, an alternative verb for telling off? Mm. So instead of the teacher told off the naughty boy, what other verb could you use? I know one that, there's one that I know that begins with an R. Reproach. Reproach, yes, that, and, and there's another one which begins with an R, like reprimand, reproach, yes. Th those two are both quite formal, so we use phrasal verbs to sound less formal. I was told off by the teacher. Now, yes, uh, so the king, the prince, sorry, not the king, the prince is still dressed as Tom, but he probably doesn't realise. He still thinks at first that everybody will listen to him as the king. And so he starts to speak to the soldier. What, it, what is the response of the soldier? What happens? Uh, they, uh, they all laughed at him. They did, and they made a joke. Yeah, made what? a joke. No, he's joking, I think. Salute. First of all, he salute uh, to to the to the prize to the guy and um, later he said be off to crazy Robbie's yes he yeah. uh, he uh, mis mistreated him okay good now which word in that page on the screen now which word means to make fun of somebody maybe by pretending in, and joking around uh, to make fun at somebody Mockingly. Mocking, yes, mockingly. So the soldier brought his halberd Mock. to a present arms. So that's his his gun, maybe. He stood up said, and pretended to be uh, obeying his orders. Um, I salute your gracious highness, but mm -hmm. he, he was really mocking him, making fun of him. And yes. be off with you. Okay, let's... We'll move along. We won't cover everything in absolute detail because it will take us all day. Uh, so we'll just try and get a, a bit of a gist of the book. And then we will... But you can ask questions. If you see any words, then just ask. So uh, here's a short sentence, a short paragraph. I will ask maybe... Kubra, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Could you just try read that little bit, please, there? Um, yes, I'm... See, uh, I'm looking. On the screen, you can see here... Could you read it for us? I don't understand. <laughs> I'd like you to read aloud for us what you see on the screen where it says this, the text on the screen just in the hangout can you see mm. the chat not the chat the screen yes I am looking in screen uh, to screen just read it for me please uh, read bye ye. Okay. Uh, here <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> sorry here the jury here. crowd class um, let me read it first and then you read it after me. So here, the jeering crowd, remember this word jeering, jeering, uh, Manuel, do you remember this word? Or Raphael, do you remember? Jeering. Jeering. Mm. Yeah. What does it mean? Uh, jeering. Yeah. Jeering is a negative uh, noise that people make, like boo, boo. Uh, so yeah. here, the, fun of. Yeah, so it's, uh, it, well, it can be just making uh, noises like that. So here, the jeering crowd closed round the poor little prince and hustled him far down the road, hooting him and shouting. Mm -hmm. And th they're making fun again. Make way for his royal highness. Way for yes. the prince of Wales. Today we say make way. 
make way for. Make way for him. Uh, allow him through. Make way for him. All right, let me move down now. That was a bit short. See if I can find something. You can start us off on chapter four. That would be good. The prince's troubles begin. Mm -hmm. Well, it, they, they've already begun because he's already experienced the life of the pauper. So, Kubra, can you read this one now? Uh, start at one? least. Yes, yeah, start at least. Uh, okay. Uh, after, uh, I'm reading. Yes, please. Am I reading? Okay. After hours of pers uh, persistent, uh, um, persistent pursuit and persecution. Per p -p 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 -pers persistent. Okay. That persistent means never ending. Persistent and the little Persist prince yep. was at uh, last uh, deserted um, by the rebel mm -hmm. and left to himself. When you can, I just ask you though, because uh, uh, do you know the difference between deserted and desert? Um, and desert. Here's three words: deserted, desert, and desert. The last uh, one is. Desert Deserted. Okay. Deserted is. Uh, what's the meaning of deserted? Uh, if deserted, you put uh, desert, it's a light. Uh, there's a light. Abandoned. Yeah. If you're deserted, you are all alone. You are left alone, abandoned, or well, I wouldn't. You always use abandoned because abandoned might be make me think that nobody cared and they left me alone but uh, deserted is they just walked away they left you alone they deserted you so if you are deserted you're left alone and the pronunciation is deserted and desert is the Sahara Desert and the last word with a double S desert what is that mm. it sounds like the first one deserted so desert and then dessert with a double S. Who can tell me what dessert is? It's a kind of sweet food. Yeah, apple pie and custard or something. Dessert. Strawberries and cream. That's good. So, um, a word which means a group of people who are a bit unruly and out of control. Which word is it? A group of people who are a little bit unruly or out of control. Crowd could be? Well, a crowd could be any big group of people, but I'm looking for a, a word in the first sentence, which means a crowd of people who are a bit unruly or out of control, not very well organized. Rabble. Rabble. Yes. So, after hours of persistent pursuit and persecution, the little prince was at last deserted by the rabble and left to himself. Could you just read on a little bit there, please, Kubra? Uh, okay. Um, as long uh, as he had been able to rage against the mob and uh, theat. Threaten, threaten. Threaten it ro uh, royally, and royally other commands uh, that were good stuff to laugh at. He commands, was very commands, commands, mm -hmm. commands that were uh, good stuff to laugh at. He was very in, uh, and entirety entertaining. Uh, entertaining, but when uh, weirdness finally forced him uh, to be sil silent. He was no longer long, longer, longer, longer uh, <laughs> okay, okay, sorry, of use to his uh, tormentors and they sought uh, salt, uh, ams, uh, amusement. Am amusement as they were. Uh, he looked about. Um, he looked, looked, looked. He looked, looked about him now, but could uh, not uh, re recognize the. Locality. locality. He, he could not recognize the locality. Can you change that little bit there? But he could not recognize the locality. Tell locality, me that. Uh, place. Uh, yeah, so can yeah. you give me some new words for this? 
Give me some modern words for, but he could not recognize the locality. So keep but, but, mm. and then how would you say this? But could not recognize the locality. Can you say another way? Place, you said, or... Who can help us here? I need another way to say, but he could not recognize the locality. So, yes, the, the place. Location. He couldn't, he couldn't recognize the place. In, in modern English, we would say something like, uh, but he had no idea where he was. Where he something was. like this, we would say usually. Um, not could not recognize the locality. He didn't know where he was. He couldn't recognize the place where he was. Where he yes. was. Okay, so let's just change readers now. But before we do, I want to do a word spot. Have a look for a word, please, which mean, describes people, people who are um, poking fun at you or uh, hurting you or uh, doing things bad to you. A word which describes these people. Morph could be. Yes, but um, there's a word. Torment. Just tormentors. Yes, the tormentors. Torment. Tormentors. Don't torment me. So this is a, a quite an, an unusual word today as well. So now, um, Lukas, can you read on, please, where it says he was within the city of London? Yes. He was within. He was within the city of London. That was all he knew. He moved on, aimed aimlessly, and in a little while the houses thinned, and the uh, and the past. Uh, passers, the passers by, passers by are those passers. people who happen to be there. The people who happen to be on the street. Other people walking down the street. So there were and fewer houses. The houses thinned not so dense, uh, just a few houses, because what was happening, do you think? Why were the houses thinning and the passers-by becoming infrequent? What are we describing? <coughs> do you un understand what might be happening, Lukash, as he's walking? Uh, Is he walking to towards the city centre or away from the city centre? Away from the city. Yes, because there are fewer houses, some gaps in the houses, less people on yes. the streets. So carry on. And uh, um, passers by were in treatment. He bathed his bleeding feet in the. Now, when we say bathed uh, it, as a verb, um, it could be bathed, but it could be bathed as well. But it's. Okay, he bathed. So. Um, all right, carry on. That's good. Bathe is the word. I think um, here we could say bathed as well, but but usually when you wash something, you bathe it. So I think I would say he bathed his bleeding feet. Okay, he bathed. He bathed his bleeding feet in the brook, which flowed, which flowed, uh, which flowed. Then where Farrington, Farrington, Farrington Street. Farrington Street now now is rest uh, rest a few moments then passed on and and presently came came upon a great space with only a few scattered houses in it and a prodigious church. Uh, he recognized this church. Sca Scaffolding. Do you know what? The, do you, does anybody know this word scaffolding? No. Well, let me describe it and then maybe you will know what it is. Sometimes when a building has work done on it, for example, windows changed or uh, changing the front of the house or building, you see a structure put up around the outside made of tubes and made of wood and aluminium tubes today and it's erected all around the outside of a building when the work is underway when the work is happening 
and so it helps the builders to climb ladders outside the building and work on the outside of the building. Have you? So do you now know what scaffolding is? Yeah, right now I understand. When one building is restored, uh, the um, the structure that surrounds it for help to the, to the workers. Yes, and usually it's made from pieces of metal joined together with yeah. clamps and bolts, and so people walk on makeshift or uh, temporary platforms around the outside of a building. Okay, let's, that's good. Now, we we'll change readers, but first of all, I want to ask for you to find a word. So, uh, the word I want you to look for will be a word which means that things are arranged in a kind of haphazard, unorderly fashion all over the place, not in a particular pattern, but they're just kind of sh everywhere. Can anybody see a word which means that? Scattered. Scattered, yes. Yeah, scattered houses in it and a prodigious church. So scattered um, means all over, th thrown around uh, here, there and everywhere. Here, no pattern, just wherever they land. So we plough the fields and scatter. Um, throw them around everywhere, scatter them. Right. Manuel, can you um, take on from there? Take over. Well, well, I say thank you. So, would you would you like please read um, on from where we are? We are. Um, oh well, well um, uh, I didn't lose it. Well, well, so, uh, the pro he, prodigious church. He recognised this church. Scaffoldings were about everywhere, and swarms of workmen, for it was undergoing elaborate repairs. So we've got this prodigious church. That's a very impressive prodigious church, and it's being repaired, and there are, are scaffoldings all around it. So now the prince took heart. Huh. Let me move it for you, just a moment. The prince took heart. I'll move the page. There we are. Can you see now? At the top of the page. At the top of the page, it says, the prince took heart at oh, once. Okay, thank you. The, the prince took heart at once. Remember, Manuel, when you say heart, it should sound like uh, park or um, car, heart. Don't heart. say, it mustn't sound like hurt. So heart. heart is like car and hurt is like bird. Hurt, bird, heart, car, heart. So the prince took heart at once. The, the prince took heart at once. He felt, felt that his Troubles were at, at at an end. Now he said to himself, "It is a uh, it, it is the as the ancient ancient a ancient 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 grave frights church, with which the king, my father, had taken from the monks and given for a home forever." For poor, poor and for shaking children, a new name it is uh, it 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 Christ Church. Christ's in English. Christ's. Christ. Christ's Church. Right, lady, will they serve the song of him? Say yeah. son, son, and also trouble. Those two words have an up sound. So uh, the words trouble and sun both have this s uh sound. Mm, okay. Right glad right, huh? right, will they serve the song of him who had 
had done so generously by them and then more than that that song is itself as full and as for no. forlorn for sad po uh, forlorn forgotten poor mm. uh, as any as any that uh, be sheltered here this day or ever shall be good okay well done now let's look for a word I'm looking for a word which means that its design is will have lots of extra lots of bits lots of patterns lots of frills and not simple so an adjective which means rich with design lots of extra pieces and patterns to it may be not simple Who can see my word? It's near the beginning and it means a design which has quite a lot of rich pattern to it or extras and um, design definitely not simple. Hello, right? Yes, now you said it like a verb so remember that as a verb please would you elaborate but as an adjective how should you pronounce it elaborate elaborate <laughs> actually when we pronounce this word elaborate elaborate repairs so remember that the adjectives don't sound the same. So elaborate repairs. But as a verb, please elaborate. Give me more information. That's a verb. So elaborate. Okay, so now we're down into the he was soon in the midst of a crowd of boys. So let me move the screen and ask. He was soon in the midst of a crowd of boys. Now Raphael, have you read any yet? No. No, uh, so could you take over now? Okay, thank you. Perfect. He was soon in the midst. Let's of go for that soon word. Soon, <coughs> moon, <coughs> balloon, soon. Yeah. He was soon in the midst of a crowd of boys who were running, jumping, playing at ball and leapfrog, and otherwise disporting themselves. And right noisily too. And right noisy too. Right is is um, like very or quite. Right noisy they were too. This is a, a a kind of word they use in Yorkshire and other places. Right noisy too. Now leapfrog. Any idea what that is, Raphael? I think it's a, it's a frog, and you throw some kinds to them. Uh, it's a play. Uh, you, it's a game you play. Yeah. You throw some coins to uh, a statue of, of a frog. Well, actually, that might be a, a game that you know like that, but leapfrog, as I remember playing in the old playgrounds and streets, is like this. One child puts his hands down on his knees and bends over, mm. and another runs up behind and jumps over his back. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you know this game? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mean, what games? Jumping, jumping from a, a boy uh, that is he's scrooged. Yeah. Uh, what, what other games did you used to play when you were younger? <laughs> um, 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 this play I I I play it uh, when I was a child, and there are a lot of um, interchange exchange um, comics, um, playing cards, and also uh, hits. Um, what? Um, did Did you ever used to play tag? Tag. Tag. Something like no. um, you're on it. I would, I would run after you and touch you with my hand and say, 
you're on it and then I would run away and then you have to touch touch somebody yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. tag is the meaning is the some yeah. people call it tag yes and what mm. about hopscotch this is a game we used to play hopscotch I, I didn't know what is I don't know what is it I don't know what it is mm. well it, we draw some numbers on the floor number yeah. one and then two and three and then number four and then yeah. five and six and we throw a stone into number one and then we jump on to number one uh, but we have to difficult. hop do you yeah. know what hop is hop hop is a like a hole or similar a square if you hop how many legs do you use ah uh, only one only one yes actually where i live there are people called whose family name is hopper uh, but it's not from jumping on one leg it is a plant that makes beer called hops so we have two hops we have one which is jumping on one leg hop along Cassidy um, was a, a cowboy who had a bad leg he was hop hop along and um, hops are sometimes used to make beer hopscotch yes I, 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 we've my school um, my children's school has a hopscotch marked out uh, on the playground all the time but when I was a boy we had to draw them with chalk mm. right so where are we now um, he was so noisily too J just read a, a little bit more Raphael so they were all dressed alike yeah they were all dressed alike and in the fashion which in that day prevailed among serving men and apprentices. That is to say, it had on the crown of his head a flat back cap about the side of a soccer. Saucer, a saucer, like a cup and saucer. And uh, this word prevailed, can you tell me what that means? So they were all dressed alike and in the fashion which in that day prevailed. So what uh, is prevailing? Prevailing winds. Prevailing. What is prevailed? Is after uh, after something. I think um, it's more is the most of anything. Yeah. So if something is prevailing, it uh, is the one that is that there's the most of. So prevailing winds in Britain are westerly winds usually. So they usually overpower the other winds and they're strongest and they're more often. So the prevailing is uh, the ones which are most common and take precedence, yes, prevailing. So, um, which was not useful as a covering, it being of such scanty dimensions. Scanty, scanty, does that mean um, not very substantial or very substantial? Scanty, what do you think? A thing of such scanty dimension, so big, very substantial, I think. S scanty um, means if something is scanty, it's not very substantial. Oh. It's a little bit not enough. So it says it was not useful as a covering. So the cap, the size of a saucer. Mm. So it didn't really cover their heads. It was scanty, not substantial enough to cover their heads. and neither was it ornamental from beneath it the hair fell unparted to the middle of the forehead and was cropped straight around a clerical band at the neck so I can imagine what it looks like can you imagine what this hat looks like mm, yeah very goofy very <laughs> <laughs> goofy. very strange but yeah. like an ancient times uh, a general of the of the army <laughs> could be. Yes, yeah, so I'm I'm looking at the clothes that they're wearing. A full gown that fitted closely and hung as low as the knees or lower. Full sleeves, a broad red belt, bright yellow stockings, gartered above the knees. Garters. I'm not sure anybody knows what garters are. Uh, some people wear them. Um, maybe when they s go cycling, garters. What are garters? Do you know? Sometimes you wear them around your trousers. 
Mm. Especially, it. especially if your trousers are very loose. It's, and maybe if you're cycling, you use them because you don't want your trousers to be caught in the bicycle chain. Yeah, so it's a, it could be a trouser that don't go to the feet. It's, it's cut at the, about the knees. Well, that too, yes, but garters are ties or things ties. which go round to keep the loose trousers or stockings close together, hmm. not loose. Low shoes with large metal buckles. It was a sufficiently ugly costume. Buckles. Uh, can anyone tell me where you might see a buckle? Buckle. One, two, buckle my shoe. What is a buckle? It's similar to ten bucks. I have no, it's not. No, it's 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 not, <laughs> nothing to do with bucks. No, it's made of bronze usually or brass. What is a buckle? Where do you see it? Two items of clothing commonly today have buckles, but one of them less so than in the past. So today we see buckles on one item of clothing more than any other. Which item of clothing do we see buckles on? The right uh, side. But the right, the right side of what? Where? And what is a buckle? Like a clip or something. It's metal, yes. It's a kind of clip and it has a circular part and maybe one part which is straight like a, a needle and it goes through the hole of a belt. So usually with a leather belt there is a buckle. And in the past sometimes shoes had buckles. Um, women's shoes today may have buckles or children's also, shoes. For men. Shoes from men have, have buckles too. Yeah, some, some men's shoes have buckles. I don't like buckles on my shoes. Have you ever had buckles on yours? Yeah, I have uh, one, uh, one from the last year with buckles. It was, it was very fashion last year here in my country. Yeah, I don't think it's particularly fashionable um, here, but I I prefer classic shoes. I like um, or, ordinary lace-ups, and so I don't have any buckles on my shoes. So, let's see what's happening next. The boys stopped their play and flopped about the prince, who said with ni native dignity, Good lads, say to your master that... Edward, Prince of Wales, desireth speech with him. A great shout went up at this, and one rude fellow said, Mary, art thou his grace's messenger, beggar? Uh, the prince's face flushed with anger, and his ready hand flew to his hip, but there was nothing there. There was a storm of laughter, and one boy said, Didst mark that? He fancied he had a sword. Be like he is the prince himself. This sally brought more laughter. Poor Edward drew himself up proudly and said, I am the prince, and it is ill beseeth me that you feed upon the king my father's bounty to use me so. So he's very angry with the boys, and he's still being teased. So um, let's just summarize what's happened then so far. So we've got the prince dressed as the pauper. What's his experience been? Peter, are you there, Peter? Peter Wang, are you on the mic? No? So, Sai, are you there? Okay, so Raphael, what would you think is the summary that we should Give uh, so far. Uh, um, he 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 she he saw um, an important chart that is surrounded by by this stuff, and he thought it's his hope. Um, because his father uh, boiled that chart um, for poor people and for 
for um, charity and he thought that he can go there and tell us, tell them that he's, he's the prince, uh, the prince and he, he, he was safe. And he had a shock, so he's, the first shock he had was that actually life is not so easy for the pauper and now he's in the shoes of the pauper, so he's experiencing some problems and that's what this chapter is, it's the, the prince starts to experience some trouble. To empathize, empathize, empathize. Empathize, yeah. He, so, okay, so we'll go on and, and next time with this one. I'm now going to start another lesson and we're going to look at some vocabulary and some words and pronunciation. So I'll end the class now. Hope to see you in the next class. I hope to. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.